All right, what's up, guys? Uh, sorry, I'm a little sick, so hopefully uh, my voice doesn't get too raspy or I lose it on you guys. Um, but today we're doing the NetSec Challenge. This is the last um, in the module for the junior pen testing before we start going into actual exploiting. Um, I'm actually really excited to start diving into the actual exploits for you guys. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. This is a very quick box. It's not very difficult. Um, it says here, all you'll need is InMap, Telnet, and Hydra, which is true. Um, I've already done this box in the past. So here we started the box. It says here you can answer the following with just InMap, Telnet, and Hydra. What is the highest port number being open less than eight or less than 10,000? So all we got to do, less than 10,000, is InMap. And keep in mind, it's going to scan our regular common ports for us anyway. So we can just do 10, 10. And I don't even remember the uh, actual 10, 10, 1, 6, 2, 1, 3, 4. All right. And we'll just do a quick scan. It comes back pretty quick. And you can see there's five open ports there. And it's asking what's the highest one? 8080, um, which is a common HTTP port or HTTPS, excuse me. Okay. It says there's an open port outside the common 1,000 ports. It is above 10,000. What is it? Now, I'll tell you guys, I wasted a decent amount of time because I didn't know if it'd be 10,000 or up to 65,000. So I'll show you the command that I ran. Um, there's faster ways to do it as well, but this is just because I thought it would find it pretty quick. Um, and the attack box apparently doesn't have very much um, computing power. So I just ran from 10,000 to 65,000. Now, this, this will take a while, so I don't recommend doing it that way. Get creative, do a bunch of different things. You can do um, faster scans, that type of stuff. Um, you're obviously not worried about getting caught here. But that's what I did. It was a little bit easier. And I ended up getting the port 10,000 and 21. Now, how many TCP ports are open? Six, because we have five here, and then the 10,021. All right, so what is the flag hidden in the HTTP server header? So this one's going to get a little bit where you have to go, you may have to go back and look at the boxes we did, but really all you got to do is we got to tell that into the HTTP server or the HTTP service, excuse me. So telnet and then we're just going to say it's on port 80. All right. And you can see we're connected. So we're just going to say get because we want that, that, um, what should we call it? That header. And here you go. There's your web server header. So this is all stuff we learned in the previous boxes. It's just showing you how it would apply in real world. It's showing you guys how um, you would put all this together and how it actually work together for you guys. Um, so I think this is a good box for practical, for learning. Um, what is the flag hidden in the SSH server header? So this one is pretty easy. This one say now keep in mind, they said you do not need SSH, you only need Telnet. That's important to know because if you try to SSH into it, yes, you you could SSH and get the header, but if you just Telnet into it and say, I want to do it on port 22, there you go, you get the header right away. So keep that in mind when they're telling you um, what you need, they're, they're being specific for a reason. So there's your SSH server header right there if you just Telnet into SSH port. Um, now, we have an FTP server listing on non-standard port. So we know, since it's non-standard, they told us that. This is the only non-standard port we have, so we know that. So all we have to do is inmap service version, and then we know that the port, we're just going to use port um, 10,021 because we know that's what port it's on. All right, and you can see it comes back very quickly with the service version. It's FTP service, and there's the version number right there. <coughs> so you can see that it came back very quickly. Now, we learned two usernames using social engineering, Eddie and Quinn. What is the flag hidden in one of the two account files accessible via FTP? Now, this one's pretty easy. If you remember how we did it before, you're just gonna use Hydra, so if you just type Hydra, It'll give you right here is what you look how you want it to look. So we're gonna say Hydra. We're gonna say L for login, and we're gonna say Quinn 
and then the capital P for the password list, and that's going to be user share. Word list rock you rock you dot text and then we're gonna do um, FTP again and one trick I tried to do here um, just because I didn't want to specify a non-standard port I tried to actually just um, uh, brute force their SSH but their SSH doesn't accept um, it didn't accept logins so that was just a if you guys have that same idea it, it's not gonna work. All right, so then 134. And then keep in mind we have to specify a different port on this. And we'll see if it works here. All right, and it's going, going, going. I know you guys can't see it. Hopefully, I'll, there's the command that I just typed. Hydra, tack L, Quinn, tack capital P, user share wordless rock you dot txt. And then FTP, and I actually, um, messed up the port number if you didn't notice I put 100,021 all right so user share word list rock you FTP and then here we go this is where it's going <coughs> and it's going now it wasn't going there before but if I remember correctly I think they're pretty pretty close to the top there you go we can cancel the rest. So login is Quinn, password is Andrea. Now, I can tell you that the person that has the actual file you need is Quinn. That's why I did theirs first. But you would want to make sure you check or you do both of them so that you can get Eddie's password as well. And his password is actually Jordan. Um, but now we need to get his, we need to go ahead and log into their FTP. So we'll say FTP. Do, 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 do. and we know okay it says connection refused and if you don't know why it's because I didn't specify that port I thought it was just gonna be alright so now name we're gonna say Quinn password Andrea alright and we're in so we hit LS and there's our our flag, so we'll go ahead and say get FTP flag dot txt. Boom, we it downloaded it for us. We can go into ours, and you can see there it is FTP, and there's our flag. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. Um, all we did was we logged in their FTP, downloaded that flag file. After we used Hydra to brute force their password with the word list or dictionary attack their their password, um, so there there's our one. This one's a little interesting. I like how they did it. Um, but basically, if we go to this website, so if we go to this website, it actually did it for us. And you notice it did it even though. Um, so I don't know if you noticed it said it was done. Well, it's funny that it said it was done because. All it's detecting is basically you can do different types of scans is all I'm trying to say because um, one of our scans did that and it wasn't the one that we just did so or the one that you necessarily should do so you're gonna use the S in scan and this is just not gonna scan the ports is what it's supposed to do and we're gonna say 10 10 162 dot 134 and it's gonna notice it so this is basically telling you what chance you have of getting caught you can see it already did it, and that's because it's looking for a specific type of traffic. It found it. There you go. There's your answer, and you notice this is still running. Um, now, I'll show you what happens if you run the wrong scan. So if I just run a regular in-map scan, 1010.162.134, we'll go ahead and reset this packet count. Now, this is a regular in-map scan. And you notice 100% chance of being detected. So the SN scan didn't get caught, but this did get caught. So keep that in mind when you guys are doing this, that they want you to not get caught. Um, the SN scan is what I use to not get caught. You guys can use different types, obviously, because you saw that the answer was already there for me. And I didn't type the SN scan up here. So I'm not sure which scan it detected. 
but one of the scans it detected previously, maybe the service version de detection or something, it actually gave us to it. Now, you also will have to go to the web browser and then you'll have to go to port 8080 to get to access this page. So keep that in mind also, guys. All right, and then that's it. This was a pretty easy box, but they wanted you to try all the things you've learned. And then you can see summary, boom, congratulations. So that's it, guys. It's a pretty easy box. If you guys like the video, go ahead and like, subscribe. It helps out so much more than you guys think. Comment below. Let me know if you guys like this box. I think these boxes are a little bit more fun to do than the ones that are just necessarily walking you through it because this makes you actually think a little bit outside the box and figure it out. So hopefully you guys like it. Um, I'll go ahead and put the questions right here up for you guys. Hopefully you guys can see them. And then I'll go ahead and do this so you can see the rest. <coughs> and we'll just have those up there for a second so that way you guys can use them if you need to. Hopefully you guys aren't just copying them. Hopefully you're actually doing the box. But let me know what you guys think. I, I appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great day. This is a shorter video, uh, mainly because I'm not feeling that well. And this was the next box in the challenge. Um, you can see here. We'll actually have the vulnerability research after this. So that's good. Hopefully you guys have a good day and hopefully you guys find this useful.